All right, we're back on Morning Line. Now, our final segment this morning with Dr. David Andrews from over at Vanderbilt, an anesthesiologist, is in the pain clinic as well. Kind of talking about opioids, and, and we, we've touched on the addiction and the, the dangerous new horizons that are coming with these new synthetic exotic opioids from overseas half the time or manufactured in some guy's backyard. The, uh, the treatment for these, again, um, you're going to go through withdrawal, right? <laughs> Anyone that has this and has been on it for a while? Well, not necessarily. Okay. Um, there are ways to come off it, depending on how long you've been on it. All right. And, you know, it, it ranges, but about 10% every few days, a re reduction in 10% every few days, you probably won't go through withdrawal. Okay. If so you slowly, slowly not coming down. this turkey thing. Right. If you've been on it for 60 days, 180 days, you probably need 30 to 60 days to come down and then reassess where mm -hmm. you are. And then if you can further re reduce your opioids, come down over another 30 days. That's an appropriate taper. All right, and is there, to keep people from falling off the wagon, is there some kind of drug you can give them that um, makes them feel sick if they take an opioid? Um, yes. Okay. Things like buprenorphine or uh -huh. suboxone. Suboxone is the one I've heard about. Right. Now, what if you're taking suboxone and you still insist on taking opioids? So suboxone has within it a opioid receptor blocker. Okay. So if you're taking it, um, what it's doing for you is helping your body not go through withdrawal, remaining functional, because we use this mm -hmm. as, a, as a chemical way of getting off of other opioids, right? Okay. It's a box on treatment, yeah. which is an appropriate way to get off, to be functional, to go back to work and not have the chronic cravings for these other dangerous ones, But Suboxone's a drug ones, too. Right? I mean, we've it done is. busts where Suboxone has been being abused and sold. Right. So it, Suboxone has a chemical within it that is blocking that opioid receptor. So if you take a lot of other opioid, you're not going to get the high because okay. Suboxone is blocking the receptor. Unfortunately, if you show up on the day of surgery and you're on Suboxone mm. and we want to use opioids yeah. to treat your pain, it takes a lot more to overcome that block to treat your pain. Okay. So there's a way of also safely coming off Suboxone in preparation for surgery, mm -hmm. and going back on it to be safe from from uh, your cravings of addiction. But when they say um, once an addict, uh, I guess always an addict, uh, was it Robin who called earlier who's been through all these and is now clean, but she's yeah. terrified about having someday have to go into surgery and not wanting to have one of the, uh, literally if she's clean, but, and those receptors maybe have reduced in her body now that she hasn't been doing it and so she doesn't right. have the same tolerance, but just one time trying it again could send her right off the wagon. It can, yes. Yeah. Um, and everyone has to recognize that certain there are certain people that are more inclined even genetically inclined right. to this more just addictive personalities and personalities environment you know the people you live with and the the people you it, that are abusing around you can can be a trigger for you you know same thing with alcohol right we have to use the support structure that we have around us to to control our behaviors sometimes that's what we need all right, and then once, uh, typically how long will it take someone to, to get clean after a period of, of abusing these pills? Like you said, it can be a lifelong thing, right? Okay, all right. Um, well, I mean, but to get it out of your system at least, right? I mean, you're always going to be an addict, I suppose. Yeah. But the... I would say if it's your decision to come off of these things and mm -hmm. you do it with the help of a physician and an addiction psychologist, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how long you've been off it, you know, or, or been on opioids, three to six months, mm -hmm. nine months sometimes, this nice slow taper off. And then while you're, while you're introducing behavioral changes and coping strategies other than opioids and other than other chemicals, yeah. these other behavioral coping strategies are really what are gonna help keep you clean. Now what's interesting about these opioids, you, you hear about people who become alcoholics for whatever reason and they have the same issues with addiction, but yeah. sometimes people drink to escape or, you know, or abuse anything to escape, but yeah. a lot of these opioid addictions, you know, it's not like they were trying to escape anything except maybe pain initially and then it just takes hold of them. It's not, right. I don't know if it was a thing where oh, I'm going to take these pills because I just feel lousy I want to escape something, which some people do with drink. It's, it's, it's a different reason for yeah. it sometimes. There's a chemical coping yeah. strategy rather than a what else, what, you know, right. what else can you do to cope with anxiety and depression and pain? Yeah. Well, you know, if you lay in bed too long, you start to feel achy. Well, maybe you shouldn't lay in bed all day. You should get up and move. Mm -hmm. Movement can, can, can help a lot. So um, Dr. Tracy Jackson in our community is, is an advocate for 
less chemical coping, more of the evidence-based strategies for treating chronic pain um, other than the opioids. There are, there's no long-term studies on using chronic opioids to benefit chronic pain. But there are a lot of studies that show the benefits of yoga, of physical therapy and chiropractic manipulation to get those muscles moving again, aqua therapy, we've talked about that before, getting up, being active, finding a reason to get up in the morning and just move. Sometimes you find yourself down in a hole of chronic yeah. pain and it's really easy in today's environment to reach for the chemical right. than to get up and get your blood moving. God, everyone's different. I, I'm just curious, just <laughs> in, in the years you've been doing this, have you ever seen someone come in, um, and maybe not for obviously some major surgery, but mind over matter where they say, look, I know this is gonna hurt, but I'm gonna just meditate and I'm gonna get to a higher level and you go ahead and cut on me. Has that ever happened? Have you ever seen someone who said, I don't want the pain pills. I'm going to do this without Absolutely. pain. And, oh, and, more and, meaning, and more common now. More and more common. And, and, and I go, okay, so, and, and obviously not for open heart surgery or something like that, but I mean, right. for something that, you know, for you and I, yeah, that would hurt, but they're in a way able to. Right. They're, you know, what component to your pain is your own anxiety and your own, we call it catastrophizing. Mm -hmm. You know, people who have this, this um, propensity to catastrophize, yeah. that things look negative, that the outcome's gonna be poor. They experience pain subjectively and differently than, than other groups of patients. Mm -hmm. And their reported pain after a surgery is higher than everyone else. Yeah. So if we can help you to reduce your anxiety, therapeutic touch, yeah. you know, different coping strategies to reduce your anxiety, meditation, yeah. prayer, Whatever you can do to reduce but that, you you're going you're yeah. to have a better outcome. I, I agree. Did, did you ever, so with the patient, did you ever have a patient like that? Said, Doc, look, I'm good. I don't want that. Just do it. So did you say, yes. are you sure? You realize this is going to hurt a bit. <laughs> yes. And he said, and not, 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 he's not doing it because he was trying to save money or anything right, like that. Right, but he's right. just like, I think I can handle it. And then they... We, we as anesthesiologists and pain physicians yeah. approach our patients the morning of surgery in that realm. Okay, we, yeah. we tailor the plan to the person. Now, and if they're that kind of person, they don't need anything. We're not going to give them Did you have exposure. some doubts that he'd be able to pull it off? Uh, of course, but people can. <laughs> and so anyway. And we it. know that we can help them do it. And he made it. And they do it. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's interesting. You think about uh, women sometimes going through childbirth. Uh, initially, right. they'd like natural childbirth, and they say, I'd like to try to do it without the... Um, um, uh, um, the pain killing shot. Epidural, right. thank you, thank you. The epidural, and they'll start and some succeed and others will attempt it and then at some right. point it gets so great they're like, gosh, I think I need it, which... Well, that's a good point you bring that up. Look, everyone should look up Tracy Jackson's TEDx talk Okay. Yeah. called The Hardest Pill to Swallow. Mm. She gives a, an example of the pregnant woman. Okay. And what's the, what's the time-honored treatment for pain in labor? Well, the epidural, what do we teach? Right? Not even oh. before that. Oh, the breathing. Breathing. Yeah, breathing. Yeah. Breathing, a form of meditation, uh -huh. a form of relaxation. So just breathing and moving and taking down that oh, anxiety, person. you can handle more than you think you can. Oh, you're not kidding. My son oh. is like that. He's terrified of shots. He thinks he's going to die. <laughs> then we finally get him in. A shot, all right? He's a big dude. You know, he's shot. And he gets in there. He goes, whoa, that wasn't so bad. It's always you the know? biggest muscular most muscular guys. Yeah, well, in. he's not really big muscular, but I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a 16 year old and he still just hates, you know, shots. That but faint with the IV being placed. It's all yeah. in here. It's all in your head. Real quick, as we wrap things up, as you look ahead, okay, do you see, do you see anything changing with regard to these opioids? Uh, I mean, in terms of, uh, as they crack down on one aspect, every time we think we see some success in the crackdown and, and getting it off the streets, there's a new synthetic coming from someplace else. Right. I mean, I think that's I, a lesson we can learn from that, right? Okay, what is, what, what is that? The lesson is, as you were, were focusing a lot on, you know, creating mice trap for this problem, mouse traps, and as you create smart mou mouse traps, as Mitch Mutter says in the Department of Health, you get smarter mice. <laughs> so we may end up chasing our tail until we do what we did with the tobacco crisis and just focus more on education. When people start coming in and saying, help me get off tobacco, you know you've reached a turning point. People aren't necessarily coming in right now to say, I've been on this opioid for so long, mm. help me get off. Right. What, what was the turning point in the tobacco industry? We saw 
commercials all over TV, mm -hmm. funded by pharmaceutical industry, right? Mm -hmm. Saying, you know, the the, here are the dangers, here are the black box warnings. And then society started to change their, their approach and people started coming in looking for help. We're not even there yet. Yeah, you're so right, person. because the bottom line is, as long as that massive demand from some of these folks, because there will always right. be a supplier. And they're clever, and they're always gonna find a way to get around the DEA or come up with new drugs and find a way to manufacture them that are more powerful than ever before and ways to get around the system. So really, and that's my belief, you're never gonna be able to stop it. You cannot stop that entirely. Right. What you can hopefully stop is destroy the demand. And there's people out there that still smoke today, but gosh, how many fewer? Right? Millions of fewer right. people have quit or never started because of these campaigns. More people are on opioids now than use tobacco. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. Doc, listen, thank you. You're awesome. I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, always good. Time. We'll keep following this, and uh, we'll have you on again sometime soon. You're always good on a number of topics as Great. an anesthesiologist. I would like you as my anesthesiologist if I have to go under. Hey. I'm not sure you could do it, though. I'm good at <laughs> fighting that stuff off for at least 10 seconds. All right. Is a that lot about of, it? A lot of meditation. Yeah, a lot of meditation. Practice, <laughs> practice up. Doctor, thank you for coming out. We'll take a break, wrap things up right after this.